In this paper, we are going to speak about the censorship of images on Instagram and how the female body is sexualized. We can say that nowadays, social networks are part of our culture. They reflect all the movement of our daily lives. We have a blur barriers between online world and offline world. It, they are supposed to represent different visions of our life, culture, and so on, but still there are problems in social networks that reflect problems in the real world. For example, freedom of expression in social networks is a controversial issue, and there are a lot of control regulations in these communities. We can say that society nowadays is more free of many taboos, as it can be the female body or the um, body of nudity, but this is a semi-taboo. It is, we are free to see nudity on cinema, TV, or even magazines, but it's not clear that we are free to see these nudes in social networks. Why? Why, why does this happen? On Instagram, for example, the community rules are very strict about feminine nudity. And on other social networks, like for example, Twitter, the rules are way more relaxed about this nudity. And they focus mainly on the protection of underage people, for example, prohibiting with the prohibition of broadcasting of sexual videos. But for this paper, we are going to focus on Instagram. We have some research questions, like for example, if users are aware of the community regulations on censorship in Instagram post, what is the perceived censorship level that Instagram applies to nudity and sexualizing content, or how does gender affect the perception of censorship in social networks? With this, our goal in this exploratory work is to analyze the level of censorship perceived in the social network Instagram regarding content related to nudity or susceptible to sexualization. For this, our methodology was a sample. Uh, we carried a survey through an online questionnaire in November 2021 to young people between 18 and 40 years old. With this, we got a sample of 95 people, 66.3% women and 33.7 men. The instrument was designed for research using a questionnaire with sociodemographic variables and closed questions about the perception of the level of censorship on Instagram. It's mostly an exploratory study with closed questions. Uh, here you have the measures that we use for gender, age, or knowledge of the regulation. Uh, we have 0, 1, 2, or 0, 1. And then the assessment of the policy in terms of restriction and the perception of the level of censorship was using a Likert scale for this. Our analysis was a descriptive statistical analysis using SPSS version 26. In the study of the perception of the censorship level, we use an inferential statistics using students T for independent samples. What were the results of this little survey? We saw that everyone that has carried the survey has Instagram, but only 67.4% were aware of the censorship policy. 32.6, even when they have an Instagram account, they don't know the censorship policy of Instagram. If we evaluate the censorship policy, for the people that doesn't know the censorship policy, they thought that it was 3.16 from one to five restrictive. And in the people that knew the censorship policy, the average rating was a bit higher, 3.39. So those who doesn't know the, the details of the censorship policy perceive it as less restrictive than the ones that don't do know this policy. Regarding news in general, the mean was 2.86, and the perception of censorship on the female body is higher than the censorship in the male body. If we do a comparative study, we see that the perception in men is lower than the perception in women. And for example, about the male body, the mean in men is slightly higher than the mean in women. They are a statistically significant difference in the perception of censorship on the male body in men. 
and in women. Here you have all the data of the study. As conclusions, we can see that the general perception of censorship is quite restrictive, it's over three, closer to four. Membership, the regulation is less restrictive than women. And there are no significant differences, but the male body is considered less limited than, for example, the female body. We have one example with the feminine nipples being part of this regulation, while masculine nipples are not. And we can see also a tendency towards the sexualization of the gaze. It's not that much what we saw, but the gaze of the people that is looking at it. The limitations of this survey are, this study are quite clear. Uh, it was aimed only to young people, and it was mostly answered by men. So the sample is not balanced by gender, a, a variable that is very important for our study. And also this, our survey was answered for less than 100 people. So that's another limitation. We have a lot of papers and a lot of work to develop in the future. Uh, we should study the gender gap regarding the acceptance of nudity. We can establish a comparison with Twitter as we already have the data. And we can also include an experiment exposing people to certain content and see how they see their censorship or not. That's all for today. Thank you for listening to our exposition. And we are more than open to the discussion about this topic. Thank you.